Fairness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience as we start our working week. We linger on the mountain of God. It is in Exodus chapter 3. We want to look at verse 13. It reads as follows in the Amplified Version. Then Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us spend a moment in prayer as we invite the presence of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name and even the privilege of reasoning with you. Dear Lord, may you equip us for the tasks that are ahead of us. Dear Lord, may you even give us the words to say. This has been our prayer of faith. Bless us now until we meet again on Friday. Amen. My dear friends, allow me to just raise five points to carry us through the week. And at point number one, I find God in conversation with Moses. The Bible opens with the words, then Moses said to God. God invites us to have a conversation with him. He repeats this in Isaiah where he says, come. Let us reason together. I love the way God goes into conversation with his children. How I pray we could have meaningful conversations with our children. Meaning con meaningful conversations with our subordinates. God does not shy away from a conversation. When he gives an instruction, when he gives a task, when he gives a mission, he gives us room to make follow-up questions. This is something that I want to encourage you as you go through the week. Take time to give your subordinates room for follow-up. At point number two, I love how Moses, being the subordinate, anticipates his audience. He wants to be prepared as he goes out to talk to them. As you are in the workspace, are you that kind of an employee who anticipates things that are around the corner? Oh, you are the type that always wants to be in crisis mode. Moses knows that he's about to go out and talk to the children of Israel. And he anticipates the questions they will ask. Do you anticipate the questions that your clients will ask? Do you anticipate the questions that your customers are going to raise to you? Do you anticipate the issues that can arise from your audience? God is expecting you and I to take time to anticipate, have foresight, have a vision as you go to your workstation. That's what sets Moses apart. That's what sets the best employees apart from the ordinary. At point number three, he says, when I get to them and I say, I have been sent unto you by the God of your fathers, they are going to ask me perchance, what is his name? May I move for a moment from the interaction that Moses has with God and say unto us, there are many who may come and say, I have been told this and that by God to come and share it with you. We do well to test every spirit. Test it according to the word of God. Isaiah still says, if they speak not, according to the light and to the testimony of the word of God, the truth is not in them. Shy away from them. Avoid them. Do not listen to them. This is the attitude that I find in the Israelites of the time. They were inquisitive. They did not take things at face value. They wanted to know which God has said this, which God has spoken to us, what is the message that is coming to us? And therefore, I encourage you, as I encourage myself, as you listen to Mr. MK speak unto you, test the spirit. Check the word for yourself. Do not copy and paste. Do not just expect the word of God to have a transfusion, just like blood or by osmosis. It does not work that way. Test the spirit. Test it. Test it. I repeat, test it. At point number four, here's the other thing. The children of Israel are not only asking, who is God? What is his name? But they have become exposed to many gods. 
while they were in Egypt, there were many gods like Munra, the god of the sun, there was the god of the fertility, there was god of the Nile, there was god of the minerals, there was the god of the, of the moon. There were all side types of gods on side. Now, when the children of Israel now say to Moses, Moses says, when I get there and say, God has sent me, these children are going to ask, what is his name? There is a possibility that when we go out to seek greener pastures, we expose our children to a plethora of gods. And eventually when we are gone, our children are going to forget who the real God is. The questions that they will remain asking are going to be testamentary that they have forgotten, that they no longer have a relationship. They have moved away from the God who created the heavens and the earth. And I want to pose this question unto you. When you are gone, will your children still remember who your God is? Will your children still remain loyal and faithful to your God? Many of us have gone after the God of money, Mammon, and in the process, we have sacrificed a relationship with Jehovah. Our children are now paying allegiance to the gods of appetite, the gods of fashion, and the gods of money and technology. They have forgotten the self-existential God, Jehovah, the great I am. We are going to discuss more on him on Friday. Please do call again. But, but, before we get to Friday, between now and Friday, reintroduce your children to the God of your, forefathers, of your forefathers. Reintroduce them to the God who created the heavens and the earth. He is the God to be worshipped. He is the God to be followed. He is the God to be loved. He is the God to be honored. He is the God who is like no other God. May your children and my children not forget the God of our forefathers. At point number five, as we wrap up, Moses as he anticipates this, what is he saying? He says, what shall I say to them? There is nothing as embarrassing as being caught offside. There is nothing as embarrassing as being found without an answer when you have claimed to be the authority. You cannot come and tell us you have a message from God when you do not know who God is. Only those who know him by name can speak for him. Only those who have an experience with God can stand up and say, according to what the Lord says, he says as follows. Those who have no experience have no standing. Talking on behalf of God, they risk being embarrassed like the sons of Sceva. Have a relationship with God, for people are going to ask you, this same God you call yourself by his name. What is his name? We stand to lose credibility if we cannot tell people about our God. We stand to lose credibility if we cannot introduce God to those who are expecting to receive the message from us. Make it a point as we part ways. That, number one, reason with God. Number two, anticipate what your audience or clients are going to be asking for, for, for of you this week. They are expecting answers from you. Have those answers ahead of time. That's what sets you apart. That's what makes you extraordinary as an employee, extraordinary as an entrepreneur, extraordinary as a business owner. Be extraordinary by anticipating. But above all, while you listen to those who have come and claiming that the Lord has sent them, test all the spirits. Do not accept things at face value. Test for yourself like the Berean church, Check the pages of the Bible and check for yourself. For yourself, does the good book really say so? And at point number four, when all is done and we have assumed our great positions, lofty ones, and we have our monies in the bank and our bank accounts are fed with many zeros, make sure your children do not forget who your God is. Because over and above all, people are expecting you to always give an answer doesn't the Bible say, be ready to give a defense for that which you have believed? This is the minimum that they are expecting of you until you meet again on Friday. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God prosper you. And may you go in the name of the Lord. 
Amen and amen.